Um, so what we're going to do today is we're looking at responsible. Um, we're looking at what does a responsible user mean? What does that mean in terms of how, who we need to talk to at various points and things like that? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and do an intro and an icebreaker for everybody. What we know from doing these icebreakers is if we don't get people to talk in these first couple of minutes, people sometimes don't feel comfortable talking the whole way through. So we're going to take that tiny bit of time and just have everyone give their name, their pronoun, where they're from. And then on a scale of one to five, how much of a bus geek are you? And that's self-determined what a bus geek is. You can decide it for yourself. Um, then we're going to have a quick look at the scope and remind everybody which bit we're looking at. Then we're going to go on to what responsible is, get your thoughts on what that is. And then I'm going to talk about the three layer model that we're kind of considering and get some of your feedback on that around how that looks like for your organizations. And then we're going to have a look at who needs to know what and when. And the last one is who dat. So if somebody comes to me and says, I'm so-and-so from this local transport authority, how do I know they are? What, what are the things that I would need to do as a responsible service owner to confirm that this person who's come to me and said, I need this account is actually somebody who should have that. And then we've got a little section as always on feedback and, and giving you some idea of what's coming up and things like that. So we'll start off with running through the icebreaker. Great. So what I'm going to do now is I'll quickly run through the scope of where we're at. And then we'll move on to the first the first bit of community chaos, I like to call it, which will be talking about what responsible is, what what that means. But first off, we're going to go through the scope. So I'm just going to scroll down. If you want to keep up on the boards yourself, if you click on two, it should take you down to the scope and plan. So where what we're trying to do here is spell out kind of where we are and what we're trying to do. So the goal that we're trying to get to in 20, well, 2025 or sooner, if we can manage it, is this kind of combined data for all of these things that has a common identity where all these different systems talk to each other really nicely and communicate really well. There are data producers, which are a lot of the local transport authorities can put the data in about these public transport access nodes and data consumers can take them out and use them to do all kinds of interesting things within the ecosystem and also often consumer apps. And this includes a whole pile of systems that are owned by Department for Transport, and there's a combined policy operations group for managing these. That's the, what we're aiming towards. Where we are with that, if we scroll back to the scroll back to the left, we've just done our first. Well, we're in the process of doing our first release, which is taking the current NAPTAN uh, functionality and recreating it on a far more stable, future-proof, able to do a few more things system. Um, and we're just going to start on a private beta um, and some of you will have received the emails for that and that will be happening sometime in June. Um, so what we're looking at today is the next step. So we've done this first bit about creating some downloads and we're doing this next step about looking at what identity and verification, what permissions are so that we can al allow people to upload data into this new system. So that's the kind of focus that we've got for today. So scrolling back up, scrolling up to responsible is. So everyone who's got access to the board, I'd like you to use stickies, uh, which you can get in the second icon down. You'll get a whole pile of sticky notes of different styles. You can use whichever ones you want. And I'm going to give you five minutes to put down what responsible is on the board. Now, if you can't get to the board, and I know that some people have trouble accessing Mural, what I'm going to get you to do is get a pen and a piece of paper and note it down yourself. And then when we go around, if your point is missed, raise your hand using the little hand raise thing on Teams, and we'll put those on the board as we talk about them and as we read through all the stickies. Does that make sense to everybody? So I'm going to give us five minutes. There'll be a little airplane, to, airplane sound when it's over, and I'd like you to think of what responsible for NAPTAN, when I say that statement, what that means for you. Andrew, you've got a question. 
Right, so that lovely airplane chi chime says that time's up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through all of the sticky notes that are there and try and group them a little bit. If there's any questions or if you've got any thoughts or you want to clarify any points that are raised, just use the hands up and we'll call on you. I'm just also going to take out the this is a titles. Um, it's OK. They drop in all the time. So I'm going to start from the top right up the top here and just zoom in. Um, responsible is ensuring that data is correct and follows the common standard. Responsible is an agency who makes sure that data is correct, up to date and well maintained. Responsible for making sure authority NAPTAN data is up to date. Dealing with adding new stops, updating and correcting stop information. Archiving stops no longer in use. Oh, somebody knows some of the future meetings that we're going to be having. Um, maintains or manages the team that maintains. I've said, got to start this one again. That, that got confusing. Maintains or manages the team that maintains the LTA's NAP10 data set. Gotcha. Got that one. Um, works to the same standard as other responsible people. Maintains accurate information. Enough knowledge and sense to check and not include incorrect data. Uh, any changes to bus stops need to come through me to ensure the database is kept up to date. Keeping the NAPTAN and National Gazetteer databases up to date with accurate information. Need to ensure everything is up to date and accurate in terms of new and withdrawn stops, as well as changes to names and coordinates. This ensures correct functionality of journey planning systems. That feels like it got copied from somewhere with the, div, the divs. Um, can add data into NAP10. Accurate changes. Responsible for ensuring NAP10 data in the public domain is relevant and accurate. Responsible for keeping local transport nodes up to date, including custom use stops. Also responsible for informing known stakeholders of changes that affect them. Maintaining a data set relevant to a specific region. Accuracy and continuity, able to develop network quickly. Responsible for maintaining the local data set and that it is accurate. Ensures there is a process in place to ensure NAPTAN is accurate, clear and responsible. And I am just going to turn off follow curses. Don't show me curses. Oh, that makes life so much easier. Um, ensures the data meets prescribed guidelines as far as possible. I love the as far as possibles and I'd love to dive into that at some point. Hold the definitive database, which is then uploaded to the DFT for others to download. Never download from the DFT, only amend the source data. Who is blamed if the data is incorrect? I think that is just the best example of responsible. Responsible for understanding the context in which data will be used downstream and seen by passengers, ensuring data meets these needs. S several levels could be assumed. The stop owner employed by the local authority is responsible for maintaining the data. Then there could be someone else responsible for data quality for uploading it to DFT. I like that breaking it down. Last person in line and owner of a change process. Local authority managers who could be responsible for the allocation of stops to the toe. Hopefully, uh, who is this one? This is. Hopefully the person who's stuck there can finish off that sticky. Add, edit, delete stops, ensure names and coordinates are correct. And I think that's got everything. And there was one more about Google, which seems to have gone. Did that one about what is in Google disappear on me? I think it did. Um, was there anything there that people think doesn't accurately reflect what responsible is, or is there anything that everyone's like, you've to we've totally missed something here? Sweet. Let's move along. So we're going to move on to the next bit. So what one of the things that I'm proposing is that there's a three layer 
permission set for NAPTAN permissions or NAPTAN contacts. So in my mind, there is somebody who we need to talk to about policy, who is quite high level, who may not be involved in the day to day. There is somebody we need to talk to about um, risk we've almost called responsible, somebody who is mid-level, who might be looking after a team or something. And then there's kind of an agency level, which is about the uploading of the data. That's kind of how I've broken it down. So what I'd like to do is just ask you to have a think, and we'll only give a couple of minutes, is we want to know what those, what you would call those three levels, what sort of name you'd put to the person at the top, that that policy thinking person, what sort of person in the kind of day-to-day -day management you put in the middle and what kind of name for the person what does the puts the data into NAPTAN there, um, what sort of names you'd give them and what sort of things that, that you would call them. So I'm going to give you like two minutes just to get your thoughts together and think of what, what you think these three things should be called because I could come up with a whole pile of different names and we've currently called them Kelly, Rajani and Jerry, just to be clear. Uh, I want to set a little timer and I want to set it for two minutes and I'll just start the timer now. So I'm also aware that this model might not fit small authorities. I'm aware that this might be a model that works really well for big groups like TFL, and transport for Greater Manchester, and it might not work for smaller for smaller places. So I'm trying to find a model that works for all different ways of of thinking. So feel free to challenge this when I go through it as well. Um, so any thoughts? I'm going to read through the stickies, and any thoughts? Just put your hand up. Is everyone finished? Would you like another minute or so? So calling what we would call Kelly, our kind of top level, we've got strategist, we've got product owner, we've got local authority team leader or higher, data manager for both top and mid level, local authority data manager, team man uh, policy none, leadership none, minion me. I do love that it's on a yellow on a yellow one as well. Um, no top level should trust those managing down. Team manager allocating accounts to others. Um, this level doesn't necessarily exist in a more rural authority. Uh, I'd call it overkill. How many authorities have this number of staff available to deal with just one aspect of transport? That's why I said I know that there's differences and I want to understand what is a model that's going to work for as many people as possible? Um, a data controller, uh, overkill, members of staff, we don't have three members, policy of NAPTANs, not really. Um, data entry team, add and archive stops. Stop owner, data analyst, bus operator, data manager, please. Is somebody aiming to be to get manager into their into their um, job title? Data entry, data analyst, data entry, data team or highways to add and edit existing stops, but not archive or all fields. Interesting. Regional data manager, manager doing jobs should have responsibility. Does this make sense to everybody? Did this three level model makes sense where there's three levels. Now, one of my thoughts was the top level is the person who's doing the public transport policy within your local transport authority. This would be the person that somebody like Adrian or Mira or somebody could go to to talk policy at a local level and how those government policies might impact. Gerard. Yeah, hello. Um... I mean, I can only speak from my own experience, but I mean, we don't even have a dedicated, you know, there isn't a dedicated NAPTAM manager for London at all. That just happens to be one of my responsibilities as part of a wider remit. So I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to be sort of constructive, um, but, you know, the likelihood of having three levels, at least for Greater London is, is, 
is not realistic. And I, I'm, I'm not being critical. I'm just being honest. Um, no, I, I've, I, I've I only got. I've, 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 sorry, I've, I've only got a team. Yeah, I've only got a, a team of four people to actually do everything related to Journey Planner and and NAPTAN. Um, and, and you know, Journey Planner is far wider than, than NAPTAN. So I mean, it, 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 I'm not trying to be facetious. It's just to put context. I mean, it might might differ elsewhere, but just in my perspective, um, it's quite a big model to suggest. That's great because we're. This is why I've been trying to pull it apart. So, uh, Jared and then Gordon. No, sorry, I'm done. Sorry, I just oh. like put in. Oh. Uh, Gordon then. Hi. Uh, our, our biggest problem is actually um, sheer boredom. If I bring up the word naptan, nobody knows or cares um, politically or or executive. It's just something that one person does, which is myself. That's it. Um, to try and convince them that it's a, a national prestige project that needs to go ahead to, to take us into the 21st century. Um, you really are. Um, it's Luddite. Na it's the quickest way to make people walk out of room is talk about nap time. So one, I appreciate everyone staying in the room, given that we're talking about nap time, but I, I appreciate that that that's um, a difficulty that we've got to with with talking about this database. It, it underpins so much, and yet it's so underappreciated. Um, Simon, you're next, and then Volta. Uh, yeah, um, mine. I was the one who wrote bus operator data manager, essentially, because I, I work for Reading Buses bus operator, um, and I feel like there should be some kind of trusted operator users potentially that can update the data set purely because you know like someone else said you, there's not always a person to go to and if is that person going to update things when you've asked them to etc cetera, etc cetera. um and, you know and as a someone whose data is important to us and it's important that it's right and it's right now not in a week's time not in a month's time um having potentially trusted operator users able to update data sets could potentially be very useful because uh, I, I, I've really even recently had 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 a struggle getting various stops updated, um, and I'm sort of not sure they're just sort of in the ether somewhere. I'm asking, sending emails saying, you know, it has this been inputted. I get told it is, but I can't find it in any NAPTAN data sets anywhere. I'm kind of stuck. Totally understand, Simon, and um, that's one of the problems that we're looking at. Um, so. I like that, and I like that idea of like a trusted, almost like a little agent. So thinking yeah. of the government model of responsible and agent, mm -hmm. very much the same as when I um, was doing my business taxes. I was responsible for them, and I could have an accountant as an agent. It's kind of thinking about that model. It's almost the reverse of the BODS model. It's BODSing, it's BODSing mm -hmm. the other way around. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a really good point to explore. Uh, Walter. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> hi. I just wanted to uh, update you. Yeah, in Essex, we've we've never really used this kind of model. The model that we've always embarked on and worked quite well for the last 20 years or so is that we view bus stops and nap turn as either being on the services side, which is the operator, or else being on the infrastructure side, which is the county council who has to put the infrastructure in at the bus stops and so on, and is more responsible for the safety and so on. And so <clears throat> what we do is uh, on the server side, because we're lucky enough to manage all the services in Essex, uh, we can make a decision uh, as to whether a stop should go in for the benefit of a service, an operator who wants to operate at a location. We can't really stop an operator from doing that. And what we will do is then implement a so-called unmarked stop, but we will always refer that to our infrastructure side who will give us a view as to whether that should become a marked stop and or whether that stop is actually safe. Okay, and then we can uh, communicate that back with the operator. So that's the kind of levels that we've worked on over the last number of years. And that seems to work quite well. Uh, as far as the operator is concerned, our operators don't seem to want to, um, you know, to take charge of NAPTAN, and we wouldn't like them to anyway. And the reason for that is because a stop is often used by many operators, 
and we don't want to land up at a situation where an operator puts a stop at point A, and another operator then puts in the same, ostensibly the similar stop, but 20 meters away, okay, uh, because they're not aware of what the other operator is doing and so on and so forth. So it, it's, it's far better, we view, that there is somebody independent of the operator who can coalesce that information into a sensible collection of stops, as it were, throughout our subregion. I, I think that's a great view, Walter, and it's very much that stops outside of NAPTAN and having the stops only managed by the operators, I think is where we started 20 something years ago yep. from, from, from what I've managed to read about how NAPTAN came about. So it's trying to figure out how NAPTAN should exist and how people should input into it. So it's really good to get your perspective and we will definitely come and talk to the Essex team a lot more. Di, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. I um I agree with what Volta was saying there. Uh, what I was going to say though was if Mira contacted the upper management of my authority and started talking about NAPTAN, it would very well not necessarily quickly get shunted down to me to deal with, but uh, you know it, they wouldn't know what she was on about and what how it affected things. So if you know, if Mira if Mira. Sorry, Di, I wanted to just ask one little follow-up question there. Rather than approaching it as talking about NAPTAN, if Mira said, I want to talk about public transport, would that change the conversation or would she still end up just talking to you? I see Gordon shaking shaking his head violently at that at that thought. Um, eventually, it would get back down to my team eventually. It depends. It, that does depend. But your your um, structure here was talking about NAPTAN, wasn't it? So it's talking about NAPTAN, but it's talking about NAPTAN in the context of that wider public transport. So maybe I should have been a little bit clearer because we need to do the permissions inside of NAPTAN and maintain some of this inside of NAPTAN. But as we're going to have to come out and talk to pretty much every single LTA to sort some of this out to make sure we've got the right people and the right permissions. I thought, heavens only knows why I thought this, that it might be useful to also collect that policy le level person who we, around public transport, who we should also talk to. Because sometimes we've been trying to hit in to a uh, local transport authority, sometimes at the wrong levels. So just trying to understand if that was a worthwhile thing to attempt to do. Um, so maybe this wasn't quite the right thing to do and it's good to know what doesn't work sometimes. Ian, I'd love to get your thoughts and then Rebecca and then Gerard. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I just first thing you think is the more people have got access to the one data set that you're going to be responsible on managing for, the more difficult it becomes. I understand what the operator's saying, but you're, you're dealing, what you're talking about there is a relationship issue between the operator and the local authority. That's the thing that needs to get sorted out. And having been in the game for a considerable amount of time, we seem to be going down a very similar route that we've gone with other things. And we're use, using a sledgehammer to crack this walnut to then put it all back together <laughs> to come out with something which really didn't really need that much doing in the first place. If there is an issue with natural quality, and we've had this discussion before, and the 5% error rate was derided as not being accurate in the first place, when we first went into this, you're thinking, right, okay, what other things are we pulling apart because of some potential issues which are isolated or local issues that aren't being sorted? And I would be a little bit concerned in that everybody's already got who's submitting NAPTAN on behalf of authorities has already subscribed to this and said, I'm the person or these are the people who can sub submit data. And if there's any other data taken in, for the areas that you manage, you've got to be asking the question, who's allowing that in the first place? Because I thought the system was already there to do this. Um, so uh, Adrian might look aghast at me saying this. Um, he is going to look aghast at me saying this. There are some people who are currently have NAPTAN accounts who no longer work at the local transport authorities, but those accounts are still being used. So we have a database of people that is not up to date 
that hasn't been kept up to date for various reasons. And one of the things on, on the new system is we're going through and doing an audit and trying to make sure that we know who those people are and we've got that clear understanding that this account is used by this person. And it's not the person who retired six years ago. This is the person who's in that position. Um, and this is how that goes. Adrian, would you like to come in there as well? Yeah, and just thinking about the long term sustainability of the system. Um, if 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 um, if somebody moves on, for example, die. If you if you were to move on, how do I know the next person? You know who the next person is going to be, and can, I can that I can give an account to. So, is there somebody who will be the responsible person behind the scenes who can authorize us creating an account for a new person, or? You know how is that going to work? That that whole mechanism needs to be worked out so that we don't open ourselves to a security risk in the future. Um, as we've left it at the moment, we're going out to you now asking who is the responsible person for each of the authorities because we don't have that, and that's a real concern for the department. So we, in terms of security, we just want to make sure that we have people that are uploading data, but we have a, a super user or whatever that might be. Uh, Jay's called them top level, but that's so we can sort of authorize. Oh, well, this is a suggestion anyway, the, the suggestion that somebody that could authorise the creation of a new account for someone that could put in things into NAPTANS. And I appreciate I've jumped in ahead of a couple of other people, so I'll stop talking. Um, and perhaps over to Rebecca. Hi, yeah. Um, probably a couple of points on that. I mean, in, in South Yorkshire, um, my team have been responsible for, you know, uploading and maintaining the NAPTAN for I don't know forever um and you know they are they are really good at what they do the knowledge is is excellent I, i've not been i've only been responsible for them for the past you know sort of three four years um but you know they know what they're doing inside and out and it's not just for south yorkshire it, we also do this on behalf of some of our regional partners in in yorkshire um i think i think because it is a a well-oiled machine um sort of that sort of top level sort of you know going above myself they don't really know they don't really recognize that this happens because it just happens it's not something they've ever needed to really be involved in or question or or worry about um so you know you do tend to find that when things do get mentioned higher up that they don't understand it and it takes some time for them to actually understand who does what and why uh, I mean, recently I had to mention something about the number of stops we have. And it's not just a question of going into Napton and going, oh, look, they're all there. You know, there's things, there's other things attached, you know, whether the, the, the virtual stops, this, that, and the other, where our internal databases have this detail. But but somebody higher up responded to me and said, well, it'll all be in bods, won't it? And I was like, well, how do you think it gets there? You know, <laughs> <laughs> we put it there. <laughs> but I, I mean, I, I think it's, it might be useful to, oh, I've jumped in again, sorry, but not necessarily thinking about the people at the level that you may be thinking there, Rebecca, it's possible that you're the policy owner and that's well, what we're trying to get to. I, I guess it's trying to understand where it sits within the organisation. That's the thing. I mean, I think realistically, yes, the, the powers that be need to know this is happening and going on and we can brief them moving up. But from that day to day, like I say, sort of like the management of, of accounts and stuff, it's probably is more my level. But I mean, we don't even have really um, specific individual accounts, so we don't have that issue. We've got like the Yorkshire data sort of email that, that we use. So whoever's sort of rotated responsibility it is at that point to, to actually do the upload, you know, then it's it's not just down to one person. And if people move on, it, it's not an issue because we are, you know, we use Yorkshire data. Um, I, I generally don't get involved on a day to day basis, but yeah, there's, yeah. And that's and that's one solution for it. And that's kind of what we're also trying to hunt down as well. Um, because if somebody messaged me and said, oh, uh, with Yorkshire data has changed and it's now Yorkshire.data at this, and I, I'd just change it. Should I check with somebody? Have I accidentally opened a security hole? So there's little weird, weird little things that we need to play around with. Um, so um, just to be honest, and I know this is being recorded, um, we lost Midlothian for quite a while, and we've only just managed to refind the people from Midlothian who are doing this, um, which 
has happened because people have moved on, mailboxes weren't being answered, group mailboxes weren't being answered. And in fact, thanks to a couple of lovely people in Angus, they managed to find the right people for us to talk to. So it really, there is, I'm not doing this just for fun. I'm doing this because there has been a problem that's built up over the last 20 years because we didn't do some of this thinking right at the start. So we're just trying to do a little bit of this thinking to kind of make sure that we don't end up in this position in 20 years time, having a discussion with possibly with most of us here on this on this call going, so <laughs> who's responsible for this bit of data today? Um, so Gerard and then Dennis. All right, hello. Um, there's a couple of observations. I've, I've really underlined some previous points made that it's not appropriate for bus operators to be maintaining NAPTAM uh, IDs. The stops are used by very many operators, but this, you know, that, that's an important point to underline um, in terms of fair competition and also what we see under better buses eventually. Um, also to sort of bear in mind that we, we've got a sort of a situation, you know, this, this is crucial data. This is, access, this is the access point. You wouldn't have Sainsbury's having incorrect information about where their stores are or when they're actually open. This is the entry point to how people will access bus services. That's just another point that, that really needs to be underlined. This is what's really, really important. And it's the underpinning thing of, of other sort of third party apps and all sorts of things. Um, Structurally, there's something we haven't touched upon. And if we use a specific example that I've dealt with lately, we're, we're eventually going to get a Hammersmith ferry put in in place of the bridge. Now, to do that in that time, um, I can add the entrances to the pier, but I can't add the pier because the pier is essentially managed. It's the same with underground stations if we get more of those and we get a couple coming in. And it's the same with national rail stations. So as well as quite rightly, we've highlighted several of us, the fact that it's difficult to actually know who deals with other regions, which incidentally is important for things like cross boundary services, which we do have in London, and I know they have them around the country as well. But finding your neighbour in contact can sometimes be challenging. But actually, it's very fragmented in terms of this, this existence of a central national database. But why aren't bus stops managed centrally? Why, why are we doing different things with railway stations? Because if we're trying to have an integrated transport network, because we're talking about public transport in terms of that time, whereas a lot of the discussion by definition is skewed towards bus services, understandably, because those are the codes that we control. But we do actually control things like you know, entrances to railway stations. Why don't we control railway stations regionally? If we're really trying to do integrated travel as the set of buses is suggesting we're going to do, then we've got to think about not only the local model, but also these sort of national data sets, because it's very, very awkward. We're having to have two different sets of people updating the same thing. Well, not the same thing, but different elements of the same thing, if you see what I mean. Totally, Jared. And I First off, sorry that you're going to have so much problems um, and hopefully we can be in a position to put in the Hammersmith Ferry um, much easier um, if we manage to get through through the upload bit as quickly as possible. Um, that, that's one of the things that I want to look at as we look at these different layers is should somebody like Gerard um, be able to manage, should somebody like Transport for Greater Manchester be able to manage those infrastructure stops within their region and how do we do that? Because I believe there's a technical limitation that meant that we manage stuff centrally rather than a data limitation and that's something that I want to explore and want to pull out as we move on um, to understanding how we make this work better. So there might be a little bit of a weird, more weird conversations happening around that because I want to understand why, kind of why we made that decision back 20 something years ago, but also how do we unpick it now and how do we make it work? So Dennis, I'm gonna give you a chance for your comment and then I'd like to move on to the next piece unless there's any more pe thoughts that people have around around this. Yeah, I wanted to sort of allude to something that uh, Becky said uh, a few moments ago and how it relates to the, the hierarchy that you presented in front of us. I mean, whole city council are a very small authority in comparison to 
the major metropolitan ones. And literally, there's just two men and a dog who's working in our office. Um, now, if you like that, I'm at the lowest level in terms of I like manage my Naptan data locally. Um, then within SIPC, South Yorkshire Public, Public Transport Executive, uh, you've got the, the middle level where that data is then collated. Um, and then you've got Becky, who's basically would be top level, who is who is essentially oversees what goes on between um, SIPC and, and ourselves. And it's, as she said, it's a well-oiled machine and it does work very well. Um, and I'm very much of the opinion, and other people have alluded to this as well, if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. Um, and as I say, I think that, you know, you can only improve on things, but I think if you throw the baby out with the bathwater, then obviously then, you know, is what it's going to replace it going to be any better? And I'm not entirely certain that that's the case. Totally appreciate that. So what I'd like to do is kind of tweak this slightly, and this is tweaked a little bit on the fly, so bear with me. I'm going to use a, I'm going to use an example, and I, um, Andy Hull, I'm going to use you as an example. So I know that Andy Hull acts as the agent for a number of people. So there are some people who manage their data and Andy X is the person who uploads their data. So I want us to sit in that model where that bottom level called Jerry is essentially an uploader of data. All they do is take the data, make sure that it uploads. And the next person up, Rajani, is somebody who, who inputs the data into a system, manages the stops. Does that help this does that help clarify this when I go to what actions do they do? Or does that muddy this slightly further? Because one of the problems we've got is there's a couple of different models across the country of how these things are handled. And I need to find a way to represent those different models within our permission sets. So give me two seconds to focus and I'll adjust some of the labeling here and then I'd like to move on to what actions they can do just really quickly so bear with me. So Jerry is data entry into stops uploads stops Rajani Yes, I do it too, of just randomly adding stickies because I forget to unlock things. Rajani manages data. And Kelly policy management. Does so, does doing something like that? help this make a little bit more sense or is it if people don't have a Kelly if Kelly and Rajani would be the same person um I am totally okay with that does this make sense so uh, Dennis and then Mark Taylor yeah I mean as I say you you've got you could have a Kelly and a Rajani and you could also have a Rajani and a Jerry um but I don't you certainly couldn't have all three obviously um, and as I say, the the way that we operate in Yorkshire um, works on that particular model. As I say, I'm responsible for all the local data, which I then sent to uh, Tom, who effectively would be in in the middle of that, uh, would be Rajani, if you like, who then collects all the Yorkshire Naptan data and sends it off. And you've got Becky overseeing that. So uh, as I said before, it's a system that uh, that works very well for us. Um, and I know it, obviously it may not be the case that it's uh, it, it would work the same way for other people, um, but I'd, I think it's fair to say that um, you know I think we're doing it right, and uh, I think we'd be a bit reluctant to sort of change uh, in any sort of meaningful way from that. So let me just be really clear: I don't want to make you change. I want to find a way to reflect how you work so that we can understand it without having to go back and people come to me in a year's yeah. time and pick my brains and go. So how does West Yorkshire work again? And me go, uh, something about yeah. Rajani uh, was probably about the best they'll get out of me. Speak to Dennis. Yeah. Um, Mark Taylor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mark Taylor. Okay. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um. Right, in Staffordshire, 
there's three of us who deal with NAPTAN. I sort of take responsibility for disseminating information and procedures to people. Um, but amongst ourselves, we share the work and I could be creating data, editing data, deleting data and uploading data. And uh, so can my colleagues. So it's, it can be very, it could be very collapsed, the, 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 the levels. Um, it's a very small and specialised area of work. And certainly the people, are, I'm not very senior, the people above me have got very little clue about NAPTAN and only became aware of it in the context of BODS. Um, so um, providing it's flexible um, and can fit, I'm sure there's a lot of other authorities who, who, who share the tasks amongst a small number of staff who know, know the details well. Um, as long as as long as it it were it, it it can fit them in that then it should work okay i'll back up the idea um also while i'm on that it's not a good idea to let other people willy-nilly edit data somebody's the person responsible which is in this case the the the, the local authority has got to hold the ring and 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 be responsible and maintain that data um i'll leave Brilliant. it there thank you mark um i I really like your, that the strength of the viewpoint that we're getting through. That only local transport authorities should up should update data. Um, so I I really appreciate getting that. So Beth and then Alex Clark. Hi. Um, it appears that we seem to have a fairly convoluted way of doing things in West Yorkshire. Um, we have got about four different teams that deal with NAPTAN in one way or another. Um, myself, we do spot checks as a, a part of the data team, do spot checks, upload exports and downloads. Uh, we've got the facilities team who look after physical and street, but all their information into the system. We've got another team that deal with creation of the, top, of the stops and where it's located and names. And then we've got the passing flow team that look at rebranding if we need to. Leeds is going through a, pass, a massive period of regeneration, so we're renaming things at the minute. So we may have a really weird way of doing things, but we're all on the same level. So I wouldn't say we have one member of staff or without having to go to a director, because we're split up, to be able to say that, yes, you could possibly make them a super user when they're one of the people that sit on the board. Um, but yes, we'd most definitely say don't let operators have control over data. I know we're currently finding that some of the uh, operators don't necessarily download our data too often. Um, we're trying to get it so um, the buses are, have, and in London you have it where you, it tells you where the bus stop is the next bus stop up and they don't necessarily use our data um, to put that information, they'll create their own. So yeah, definitely don't let operators have control. Thank you. Thank you, Beth, for that. Um, Alex Clark. Oh, thank you very much. Um, it was sort of to say that um, in Wales, we're in a unique circumstances because Travel and Company are the uh, the data managers for all the data in Wales, but obviously as the local authorities, we are responsible for feeding that, feeding that information in. Some are better than others. I think when it comes to um, responsibilities, there's certain things that I'd be happy for somebody else to, to, to manipulate that data for me, whether it be um, some of the identifiers. I think from my point of view, as the highway authority, ultimately I wouldn't want anybody else responsible for the location of the bus stop. And is it a bus stop or isn't it? At the end of the day, we are the highway authority. We are responsible for what is on the ground. And if, if ultimately, if we say a bus stop is not safe and we don't want a bus stop in somewhere, I don't want somebody secretly behind the scenes to go and add something in. What what they call it, we can have a debate on that, and I'm happy to have some debate and, and said and, and you know what direction it's in and it, it, what what's it outside. But I think from a permissions point of view, ultimately as the highway authority, we get the say on is it a bus stop or isn't it. I think uh, the rest of it then, so not not too bothered at. That makes sense, Alex. And just to make sure that I'm clear. Um, Tansy is one of the people as yes. part of the group that you would then give your data to and they go and do the upload into NAPTAN. Absolutely, yeah. That's great to understand. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, so based on that and just kind of looking at the time, I'm going to skip a bit because I think we're possibly going to have to do another 
there'll possibly be a round two on this, but I'll come back with a bit of a proposal and we'll do the round two based on that. One, so we're going to play with a lot of the voting engines. So bear with me because I'm going to have to do a whole pile of little voting sessions and play around with this. Well, what I'd like to do is thinking about these three people. So Kelly works at the local transport authority. They are very senior and they are more about the policy. They're the sort of person who is building the public transport policy. Rajani is somebody who would be like Alex, who I just spoke to. Um, they are somebody who is managing the stops, looking at the stop data, making the decision as to where the stop sits. Jerry is somebody who is ensuring that the stops, um, the stop data comes out of whatever system is being used and is uploaded into NAPTAN. So they're responsible for that little, that last step in the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a pile of voting and there's going to be a situation and I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to decide. You get one vote or two votes. I'll be nice and I'll give you two votes. You, I need you to tell me who should be told that this has happened. So I want to understand, for example, if my NAPTAN file was uploaded successfully, which person should be told that their NAPTAN file was uploaded successfully? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a voting session. I'm going to set two votes and this is NAPTAN uploaded. Next. So begin voting. So see these see this area here Oop. my screen's just decided to run away because it's a vote session see these three here i'd like you to vote just on these and tell me which which of those people you think should be told that their uh, their lta naptan file has been uploaded successfully does this make sense the first one will be a bit slow and then we'll move on and it'll go fast. By the end, it'll be like. I can see some people have gotten rid of their votes. Um, if you think there's only one person, vote twice, get rid of that vote. So of these three people and of the roles that we've assigned them, which person should be told in the situation that this situation has happened? Okay. Is this making sense to everybody and is everybody able to find the right places to vote? Um, no. If you, if you, no. If you, Mark, is this because you can't access? Um, I think it's because I'm Mark Taylor that it's not work, that I don't understand probably. <laughs> where, where do I put my vote? Okay, so on the mural, Oh, I've got to go to there the mural, are, have I? Yeah. You've got oh, to that, be on the mural. The that's probably the difficult bit then. Then, th then Mark, I'll if, withhold you my about vote, then. The, if you you think about who it should be, and yeah. then if it differs wildly from, from what we get from everyone else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'll oh, shut up. No, I wasn't asking you to be quiet at all. Mm. Uh, how are we going? There's a few people left. Does anyone oh. need any more time? I'm unable to vote because I can't um, get on the, um, I've obviously been blocked doing that. Okay. So. okay. If you, if you take a note of who you would vote for, and then if we, if there's a tiebreaker or something, I'll ask you to call out and tell me who, who you thought should have been there as well. How's that? Okay, we're just about there. I've still got a few people waiting for votes. Is is there anyone else who's having trouble accessing the mural board? Is everyone on the mural board able to find the right places to vote? I know this is a bit of a chaos moment. I'm I'm about to press end voting session. I'm horrified as to how, where this how this could have worked out because I know that it's can be a bit tricky. Okay, ending the voting session. Going to end it for everybody. 
Okay, so we got a couple of people who voted up on the top. That's completely fine. Um, they both voted for Rid Rajani. Um, so we had Jerry, who is the person who uploads the stop with the most votes. Then we had Rajani, the person who manages the stops, got 17 votes. Nobody thought that Kelly should have got, or no one person thought that Kelly should have also received it. Um, so it sounds like both Rajani, who manages the data, and Jerry, who uploads the data, should be told that the upload went successfully. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Is there anybody who disagrees with that? Okay, so now we're going to move, I'm just going to mark that one as uh, unlock, change the color to yellow because I did it. So moving on to the next one, um, my LTA Naptan file didn't upload okay. So what I'm going to do, you, you're going to get the sense of, of how this works. Uh, so not upload. So this is this could be anything from the file got corrupted to the system didn't work to you put it in and it just failed to pass through. So as you uploaded the file, it didn't work. Who are the people who should be told? Should it be Kelly, Rajani or Jerry who should be told about this? So start your voting. Hopefully this this will go a bit faster because you've all kind of got the idea. And we'll just vote on those three under next to my, my LA Naptan file didn't upload OK. What I'm trying to do here is to pull out. We're going to build some kind of notifications engine. Be great if we knew who to tell rather than spamming people, filling people's mailboxes with spam and all of those things. We want to find ways of telling the right person the right message. And that's why we're going to go through some of this. Cool. We've got quite a few people who voted. I'll give you another 30 seconds or so. Just going to set this right down to, can I go down to 30 seconds? No, a minute is the lowest it will go. How annoying. Give you a tiny little bit more time. I can see a few more votes have gone. Okay, I'm going to end the voting session and hopefully this one made a bit more sense for everybody. So we had 23 people say Jerry and 21 people say Rajani. So the same people who should be told it was successful should also be told that it wasn't successful. That's really good to know and really good to understand. Now here is a here is a here is an interesting one. Rajani, Jerry and Kelly work for a local transport authority. There is a neighbouring local transport authority and they have some cross-border traffic, as everybody does. Everybody has cross-borders. So this chosen LA that's not the one that they work for has uploaded a file successfully. Who should know? So I'm just going to quickly start another one of these. You've got two votes and tell me which of these three people should know that that border, that cross-border person, that cross-border LTA has uploaded successfully. Somehow I've lost the word Rajani from the middle one. But thinking of those same three people, which person should be told that this, this LTA that they neighbor on that is cross-border to them has uploaded a file successfully. And we're getting faster and faster at this, I can see. Uh, Di and then Andy and then Mark. Die first. I don't need to know that they've uploaded their nap time. You don't. So, so you don't think anyone you you wouldn't need to know at all. No. No, I can't. Um, no. So, what is what is one of the K 
what is one of the LTAs that you border? I'm just trying because I can't North do Yorkshire, um, Durham. So so if Durham has put a new stop in and you're you're running some cross border things, you wouldn't like to know that there's a new stop there. Well, you wouldn't know that it's be, they've uploaded updated their nap time because of a new stop. Not unless they tell you they've just updated updated their nap time data set. It could be just that's stop names changed or you know whatever um and so i would expect that neighboring authorities we we all talk to each other and if there's a new stop that's on a route that affects me they'll tell me fantastic so that's really good to understand um so this would be notifications you don't need them because they happen outside of the naptan infrastructure yeah andy do you have any thoughts on this well, actually, I was just going to agree with exactly what Di said. Um, the, you know, a bordering authority, I wouldn't need to know they had a file updated. My inbox would fill up very, very quickly. Um, if I asked them to put in a file, I would expect them to tell me that they've done it. I wouldn't need to know an automated email. So, yeah, I just agree with Di. Fantastic. Um, Mark, do you have any thoughts there? I was, just about to, I was just about to, sorry, I, my microphone was di um, off. Um, I was just about to turn my hand down because I agree with uh, Diane Andy. And I, I mean, you might consider whether we wanted the option to ask for it um, to be told about neighbouring authorities, but I've never done so to date. OK, that's that's really great to understand. I'm just going to end the voting session and just find out. So we we had a lot of people voting for Rajani needing to know and Jerry not so much needing to know. So so that's really interesting to understand and we'll pull that apart as we get a little bit further down. Uh, um, so Nicholas, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, this, uh, we tend to supply the coordinators, the data coordinators with, with trans exchange files that that already have the stops built in however um from past experience i would have only said that an, a, an authority would need to know about a new stop in an adjacent area if they are responsible for the timetable data and it needs to be added into a service um usually that would that would have been our responsibility as the operator to advise them rather than authority to authority. But I said, because we now supply our our files directly as trans exchange data, which is loaded into the travel line back office, it's already automatically populated, but it will be possibly relevant to those operators that don't and the coordinators are building that data by hand. Cool. That makes sense. It's it's good to get these kind of different perspectives on how these things work and ensuring that, that we get as many different views as possible of that part of the process. So thank you so much for that. Um, so the next one I'm going to do is who would need to know if an issue with a stop was reported by a bus operator. So a bus operator has gone, actually, this stop isn't quite in the right place and I want to report an issue with it or the name is not quite right. So just bear with me here. I'm just going to do another one of these. And this is called Stop by VO. So begin voting. So let me know which of these three people should be told. So pretend there's some magic called some technical magic that somehow a bus operator can report via some mechanism an issue with a bus stop, who would need to be told about that report? Whether it came from BODS or Trans Exchange or Travel Line, well, that's technology magic. We, we're we just trying to figure out who would need to be told. Would it be Kelly, Rajani or Jerry?
I know that there are some people who've got strong thoughts and some people who don't have strong thoughts. I'll give you a few seconds more. And just in the voting session. So we have Rajani as the person who would most likely need to be told, but Jerry would also possibly need to be told that there's an issue with the bus stop. Is there any dispute on this? Any worries about this one? Fantastic. I'm going to blitz. Oh, die. Yeah, not a dispute as such, but just if Jerry's function is literally to upload the data set, then essentially he's just doing what he's told. And it's up to Rajani to sort out the issues and then just tell him to upload the new data set. So, but yeah, certainly up and down the country, Jerry and Rajani are the same person. So it's not a yes. split thinking. Yeah, and it's trying to understand what that means. Andy. Yeah, in the example you gave earlier, Jerry was the, the travel line or the regional data manager. So he manages the people at all the local authorities and manages the data quality. So that's why I, for example, put a tick in his box as well. OK, so it's it's more if they if they were managing the data rather than just uploading the data. So that's really good to understand that nuance there. And I need to next time I next time I do something like this, I'm going to map out a little process and make sure that we we're all in agreement as to who's doing exactly what. But this is a good start to help us think about how this works. Um, I'm going to quickly race through the last some of the couple, some of the next ones. Um, an issue with the bus stop reported by actually I'm going to try to do all of these across this thing in one go. I'm going to give you eight votes. I know Adrian's like, this is going to be complete and utter chaos. I'm like, yes, it will be, but let's let's go with it. So we've now got this model of voting. I want you to think about each question. You can vote twice on each question. So the first one is an issue with a bus stop has been reported by a member of the public via this magic reporting model, reporting thing that we're going to do. Who should know? The next one is somebody's uploaded a bus stop and it's failed an automated business rule check. So there's been a business rule and it's come back saying it's too close to water. It's not close enough to a road. There's something that's come up there. The next one is DFT wants to talk about a, a new regional policy paper. So they want to create transport for Greater Devon. Um, I, again, Adrian Careful. laughs at my that's knowledge. That's not actually of... a policy objective that's happening right now, just as this is recorded. Yes, yes. Um, transport for the greater place of somewhere. Um, who would who would DFT try to get in contact with? And if and the last one to vote for in this round is if DFT wanted to talk about the NAPTAN schema, if they wanted to put a change into the schema or change the schema, who is the person that they should consult and talk with? So I'm going to create a voting session. And this is going to called, be called chaos. And everyone's going to get eight votes. And you vote across those four questions. And just tell me whether it's Kelly, Rajani, or Jerry, who should be the person who does it for, for, for each of these. And I'm going to give us a minute on the timer for this one, because I know that it's a complicated set of things to think about. So, ah, yes, fantastic. This has worked. Thank you very much, everybody who who took part in this one. So for an issue with the bus stop reported by a member of the public, it's Rajani and Jerry who need to know. More likely Rajani than Jerry, but we want those people. A stop failing an automatic business rule check, like it's too close to water or not close enough to a road, it's Rajani and Jerry again. DFT wants to talk about a regional policy paper. Kelly finally has a reason to exist. So it's Kelly and Rajani, and it could be a mixture of both of those roles. DFT wants to talk about a NAPTAN schema or talk about the NAPTAN schema. It's Kelly and Rajani with a little bit more edging towards Rajani than Kelly. Does this make sense to anyone? Is there anyone here who's like, no, everyone's completely wrong. These questions don't make sense or these answers don't make sense? They stop failing an automatic automated business rule check. 
certainly a lot of people up and down the country will have software that won't allow that to happen because your software catches it first. I know not everybody's like that, but that's just one thing. I totally, I totally understand, and and that's why I was I was being quite soft about it because I know some of those checks work and some of those don't and we want to make sure that whatever business rules we put in which will be a later meeting and i'll get to that in a mo um we we make sure that we cover those properly right we've got about 20 minutes left we still have a little bit of work to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the last four in the same way so let's look at the last four and then we'll set up a voting session so the first one for the last four a new member of the team joins Bob, Bob, short for Kate, joins, um, and they they they've been added to new NAPTAN. Does anyone of those three people need to know? Somebody will have done it. Somebody will have done it. But is there a double up and a double check? A bus operator wants to contact the local transport authority. Whose name should we give them? Who, if they say, I need to contact. The, the local transport authority about multiple buses, bus stops, or a new route or something. Who who of these three people should we give them a little contact, talk to this person button if there was such a thing? Somebody is sticking up the road and it's going to disrupt a number of bus stops. So um, Atkins, have just, Atkins are putting in HS2, it's coming through. There's a whole pile of bus stops that need to be rerouted. Who, which of these three people need to know that that is in the planning stage and start to plan the changes to NAP10? And who would need to know if a new bus stop has been created in a neighbouring LTA? And if they, if nobody needs to know, uh, put your vote on vote and I'll get the sense of that. So let me just create one last one. Start voting session, not so chaotic because we've now got a sense of this. And I'm going to give you 60 seconds again. Begin voting. And I'm going to give you 60 seconds again to vote as to who should be told by the system across these four, these four kind of scenarios. So a new member of the team is added to new NAP10. So some people thought that nobody needs to know. Few people thought Kelly needs to know. The most people thought that Rajani needs to know, and a couple of people thought that Jerry needs to know. I think that kind of starts to allow us to make a bit more sense of this. If a bus operator needs to contact the LTA, we pretty much split it between Kelly, with Rajani being the main person that they would need to contact, with Jerry possibly being the least likely person. Hopefully that makes sense. Roadworks will disrupt a number of, number of stops. A couple of people thought nobody needs to know. A few people thought that Kelly needs to know. A lot of people thought Rajani and Jerry would need to know. So this would be information that might come from street manager or the highways planning that would need to come across and let people know that those bus stops were impacted. A new bus stop was created in a neighbouring LTA, assuming a cross-border. Um, most people, well, more people thought that nobody needed to know than Jerry needed to know, and a few people thought that Rajani needed to know. Does this make sense? Is there anyone who's like, this is miles off, you're completely miles away from here? Volta. Hi, can I, can I just uh, reinforce what I think Mark was saying earlier on? In the, I mean, is this a rigid model? I can see it all makes sense if you have these three individuals, but I can guarantee you in the case of Essex, for instance, that will be one person. <laughs> so um, is, this, is the thinking that this could be one person, or indeed there may be one sort of person generally in charge who is an account holder, and they may have a, an alternate delegate who has exactly the same sort of authority in the event that they're away. So you might have two people or even three count holders who cover all three of those roles. So what I wanted to model more was the different roles that people were fulfilling. If somebody could hold those different hats. And this has been really good for understanding that the the people might not exist, but the but those roles exist across all three in different ways. And while it might be the same person who holds, who wears all of those hats, we 
the hats might be the right hats. We might need to play around with the hats a little bit, but we've got the right hats, but different people wear the hats at different times. Okay, then I think maybe you need to, there, there may be some additional roles that need to be put into there. Uh, okay. one, one, one in particular that I'm thinking that I, I referred to earlier would be the part of the organization that deals with the infrastructure at the stop. I think these three roles relate really to data pertaining to NAPTAN, but you know the local authority is also responsible for the infrastructure that goes in at a stop. That's really good because one of the early scribbles that those who came along to some of the early meetings might have seen a little drawing of somebody at a stop with a device saying, I've finished making the stop look like a stop and that going directly into NAPTAN or going directly into software that fed into NAPTAN. So that is a role that we'd thought about, but we hadn't really mentioned it for a long time. So we've let it drop. So that sounds really interesting to kind of bring that back in and be aware of that. So thank you, Walter. Okay, can I just raise one other uh, crucial point in this rela in relation to this? Uh, we've had some discussions in Essex. Uh, at, at what point does the local authority become legally responsible for what happens at a stop? In other words, you know, if they if we put a nap turn in and somebody gets hurt at that stop, uh, do we automatically become responsible for that? Are we liable for what happens? And I think we've come to the sort of sort of middle way conclusion that uh, if we put in, we, we can't stop a bus uh, operator from wanting to stop his bus somewhere. So from the NAPTAN point of view, we will happily put in a NAPTAN stop, but we will not put in infrastructure and we'll call it an unmarked stop. In other words, we will not take responsibility for that stop. We're hoping that will stick. However, if we decide that this needs some, you know, some uh, shelters or things of that nature, at that stage, if it becomes a mark stop, then does the local authority become responsible for that stop? There's a sort of a gray line there, and we're not sure, uh, you know, how far our responsibilities lie. That isn't so far above my pay grade to answer that. I'm going to leave that one to Adrian, and in fact, I think we'll probably take that to the SRO board and say how on who, how could we get a decision on something like this? Because that's a really interesting question. Adrian, uh, do you have any thoughts? No, Adrian's left the room, actually. This is just the answer. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's not something that we considered. Um, I mean, in terms of we're looking at the redevelopment of the service, we hadn't looked at the sort of legal responsibilities once something becomes in NAPTAN. Does that give it the stamp of authority that the local authorities approved it in some way? Um, it's certainly a very interesting point. I, I don't know where the most appropriate place to take that is. I think... Uh, as any, I'd be interested to hear um, if anyone else has been thinking about this or been doing any work in that space. Dai? Yeah, we've got one such stop actually. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's used by the operators, or they they want to use it as a just to split the journey up. You know, they've got to have a stop every so many kilometres on a, a long distance cross boundary thing. Um, but where they've got it is the top of a very steep hill on a 50 mile an hour single carriageway road. And I absolutely refuse to put that in as a nap time point because I will not endorse that as a stopping point. It is not safe. Um, mm -hmm. So we tell them you can't use that point that you've put in your paper registration. It's not an EBSR. Um, you need to change that stop to be a different existing stop because it's not safe and I'm, I'm not going to put that in for other people to use and effectively endorse it you can't do that thank you Di. i think that's a really good understanding of that and a good practical example as well that that we could use to model this up and to talk to people about and kind of understand where that is and adrian's right this doesn't fit within a lot within the redevelopment of NAPTAN, but it fits within the thinking and within who's responsible. And if we call somebody responsible, what does that actually mean in terms of responsibility? Um, and also how it links across to the highway safety I mean, and pieces um, like that.
we'll, de I'll, we'll definitely take that one and raise it with the appropriate teams to see if there's uh, if if there is someone that has done some thinking around this or is is more is better place to answer the question because yeah it's a really good question. Um, Gordon. Hi, we are just to support Di. We have the opposite has come up that um, a neighbouring authorities developed um, what was a, a rural out of town area into a retail park, and an existing bus stop was rebuilt, which means vehicles had to cross backwards and forwards over uh, carriageways. The the bus company approached us and said, "Look, we don't think this is safe. We don't want to use it." Um, so we quite happily exclude it from the bus stop list that the services running through that area um, could call at. Um, and they're quite grateful for that. And, and that's why really uh, control of NAPTAN um, needs to be with us so we can talk to bus companies straight away. I, I put in emergency bus stops last week. I put I went and done the survey myself um, and by within three days we had bus stop poles with flags um, and up onto Naptan. Uh, the services started running on Monday due to an emergency closure. Um, it, it's all intrinsic in, in managing the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that ties in very nicely with we need to consider that infrastructure, we need to consider safety, we need to build some of that link across into that highway street manager type level system as well. And and really understand the political scapes in which you work. Bus stops don't exist in a vacuum and there are different reasons as to why somebody might want a bus stop there. Um, Mark Taylor. Um, we've had some nutty suggestions from a large operator operating into Staffordshire where his suggestions have just been not safe and we won't accept them. So um, the, the, the safety responsibilities, the highway safety responsibilities are very important and and it's a reason why we should have the final say in where buses stop. Even though we know that a bus could pull up anywhere, for example, on a hail and ride section where we've got a, where we've got a physical stop or a noted stop on that turn, we should be in control of that. I have Absolutely. a question, if that's OK, Jay. Um, do you put stops into Naptown where they're on property that might be private? I'm thinking of sort of maybe shopping centres or I know there's a stop in a hospital near me. Does that go into Naptown on private land? Is that me, something that we treat consistently? Me personally, we put them in. Yeah. Is that in, in school grounds or mm -hmm. in, 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 in retail parks, which are on private land? Yeah, because there is a stop there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's but it's open to the public for for registered bus services. So yep. Does anyone have a different um, view on that? Sorry, Joe. I'm just going to hold this up because we've got five minutes and I have something that I need to do. I can't see. And what Adrian's is. I running. It's a rabbit. <laughs> it's a rabbit. He's running down a rabbit hole. Um, that's a really good discussion, and I want to have that discussion. Just not right now because there's something else I need you to do just to make sure that we get through this. Is that okay, Adrian? Cool. Right. We've done all the voting, we've done all of this. We'll ignore who that because we just don't got time for it. Uh, this has been such a good discussion though. Um, so we'll come back to this about how do we know that it's you. And the last thing, so the last thing that I need is I want to get your feedback on the contacts that we've been having with you. We want to make sure that we're doing the right level contacts. We're having the right conversation with you at the right time. We're involving the right people. So. I'd like you just in the closing minutes, take a couple of minutes to say what gave you joy, what's good and useful, what frustrated you, what's not good or not useful, and what's made you sad, what things are missing, what should be happening that we're not doing. So think about those things. And really quickly, there's some more meetings coming up. So we've just done the LTA responsible for those who haven't been aware of what we've been talking about. This one in June on June the 9th of June, which will be about the unwanted stops. So the difference between archived and deleted. Do we want them both? What do they both mean? Do we all agree what they mean? And what do we do with these unwanted stops? Does anyone need to know about them? And then in July, we're going to get on to talking names and mapping. And then in August, we're going to get on to migration planning and the dreaded 
the dreaded school buses, which will also include private bus stops on private land and things like that. So that's what's coming up in terms of public meetings. There's links all on here to sign up. They will also been sent out by Tim Rivett. They've also been sent out by me two days ago. Um, I'd like you to go through and just give us some feedback on what gave you joy, what frustrated you, and what's not good or useful. Um, but in the meantime, I want to say thank you to everyone um, for your participation, for your time, and for the energy that you're putting into these. I know these are long to our sessions. Um, we are talking about some of the n real nitty gritty stuff that can be really difficult. Um, and I really appreciate everyone's focus and, and commitment here.